This is Dr. Holt. Uh, I'm going to go over a projectile motion problem here where the object is being launched at an angle. Uh, these are more typical of the type of problems that you're going to see. Um, again, these problems are not that much more difficult than where an object comes off, uh, say, like a cliff at a horizontal with a horizontal velocity only. You just need to break it into components. So I'm going to show you a problem here, and we'll solve this one. Um, let's scroll this down. What I have here, I have an object here. <coughs> has an initial velocity of 40 meters a second. The angle that's coming off the horizontal is going to be uh, 40 degrees. And it's coming off a cliff 200 meters uh, tall. And a couple things we're going to find here, actually a few things. We want to find out what the horizontal displacement is. We want to find out what the final velocity is at impact. We want to find out what the angle is going to be of, the object, of, these, of this object when it hits the impact. And we're also going to find out what the excuse me, maximum height of this object is going to be in respect to the valley floor. All right, again, if you're going to do any type of projectile motion problems, you have to um, work with the horizontal and the vertical velocities completely separate. There's, it's, just like, it's just like two different systems. Don't try to combine them together because it makes the problems very complicated. Okay, a couple things just to clarify. And you, you, you would have found this out from, uh, from a physics teacher or, or any type of textbook. It's when this object travels through this parabola, the horizontal velocity is going to be the same. It's going to be the same up at the vertex. It's going to be the same way at impact. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this 40 meter second into x and y components. All right, let's go scroll this up. So the horizontal velocity initial is going to equal to 40 meters a second and we're going to multiply that by the cosine of 40 degrees. That's going to give me my horizontal component. When I do that, that's going to give me a value of about 30.64 meters a second. All right, we're going to do the same thing with the vertical part. The vertical velocity initial in this case is going to be 40 times the sine of 40 degrees and we run that through a calculator and we get a value of about 25.71 meters per second. All right, <clears throat> so the first thing I would recommend the problem like this, let's go ahead and find out how long the object's gonna be in the air. Now, the how long the object's gonna be in the air, the horizontal has no impact whatsoever on this problem as far as how long the object's gonna be in the air. Because we wanna find out how long it's gonna take to, for this object basically to be launched initially with the 25.71 straight up and then how long it takes to come down. So it just becomes a free fall problem. All right, there's two things you can do here, okay? You can go back to this equation. You can say, well, I'm gonna work it with y is equal to my vi times t minus one half times 9.8 times times squared. Okay, you can do that problem. The only situation or the only um, recommendation I would have on this one is you end up with a quadratic equation. Some students don't like a quadratic equation to solve. The simplest thing, and I think the easiest thing for students to do, is to find out what the final velocity is going to be in the y direction at impact. So we go back to the equation that we know that vf squared is always equal to vi squared minus 2 times 9.8 times y. Alright, this is more of a two-step process instead of a one-step process. So we're going to find out what our final velocity is going to be in the y direction only at impact. We're going to go ahead and put in our initial velocity in the y, which is 25 point, oops, mess that up. Sorry, 25.71. We're going to square that. We're going to minus 2 times 9.8. Now our displacement here, let's go this down. Our displacement is going to be minus 200 from where we started. Because we started up here, so our displacement down here is going to be minus 200. So we'll put minus 200 in here for y. All right, we're going to solve that. And you're going to see you're going to add these together because you've got a negative times a negative. If you run those values through, you're going to find out that vf in the y direction at impact, again, when you do a square root, you've got to consider plus or minus. So you're going to get a minus 67.68 meters a second. All right, so now we fall back to our other equation that we know that Vf is equal to Vi minus 9.8 times T. We can use this equation to find time. And again, I think this is an easier process for most students to do. So I just got to start putting values in. I put some, my final is going to be minus 
0.68 is equal to my initial, which we said was 25.71 minus 9.8 times t. Okay, so all you're going to do here is you're going to subtract 25.71 from this side. You're going to bring it over. You're going to add the two together, and you're going to divide by negative 9.8. When you do that, you're going to find that time is equal to a value of about 9.53 seconds. Okay, so that's the time the ob the total time the object is in the air. All right, so now let's while we're here, let's go ahead and find out what x is going to be. Let's find out what the horizontal displacement is going to be. Again, all we go back, we go back to equations that um, let's change it. we'll change this into x. Our displacement is equal to vi times t plus one half at squared because it's one of our just our any of our horizontal displacement equations. But again, here we know our acceleration is zero because we're ignoring air resistance. So we can ignore this part of the equation. And then horizontal displacement, very easy, is going to be x times my horizontal velocity, which we said was 30.64. We multiply that by our time, which is 9.53. And we're going to get a, a displacement of approximately 290 two meters. Make that two a little bit better. So that's our horizontal displacement. Alright, so now um, let's go ahead and let's find out what our maximum height is. Okay, let's scroll this down and get a different another piece of paper. Um, to find out what our vertical displacement is, the, the equation that I always recommend for any type of vertical displacement is go back to Vf squared is equal to Vi squared minus two times nine point eight times y. Okay, and we're going to find out what y is going to be in this condition. We're going to take it from the top of the cliff. So at, at the vertex or at the maximum height, v final is in the y direction only. Now this y direction only is going to be zero. We go ahead and put in our initial velocity, which is in the which was the y component any of excuse me, the y component only, and we said that was twenty five point seven one. So we're going to go ahead and square that. We're going to say minus 2 times 9.8 times y. So all we have to do here is solve for y. So we're going to move this over to the other side. That's going to give me a square root of 25.71 squared. We're going to put the negative on the outside. Make sure you do not square the, uh, don't, when you do the square root, make sure that you don't put the negative inside and square it because you're going to get a positive value. That's going to give me equal to 2 times 9.8. Solve for y times y, so now you're going to divide everything by negative 2 times 9.8. That's going to cancel this out. That's going to give me the value of y. You will find that y is equal to about 33.72 meters. All right, the 33.72 is the distance from the top of the cliff to the maximum height. So from the valley floor, if the question asks you what is the maximum uh, height from the valley floor, you just add 200 on it, onto it. So 200 plus 33.72 gives me a value of 233.72 meters. Would be our maximum height from the valley floor. All right, now let's go back and let's find out what the velocity is going to be at impact. All right, we already know that the horizontal velocity, which we calculate is 30.64, at impact, the horizontal velocity has to be the same because during, during the path of the parabola, the horizontal velocity never changes. So we can say immediately that Vx final has to be 30.64 meters a second. And we'll just draw that as a vector straight out. That's not going to change anywhere. That's going to be the same at impact. All right, so now let's go ahead and find our final velocity. Final velocity final, easiest way to do that, Vf squared is equal to initial velocity squared minus 2 times 9.8 times y. All right, we'll go ahead and find that out. So Vf squared is going to equal to our initial velocity, which we said was 25.71. Again, that's only the vertical component only. We square that. We minus 2 times 9.8. We're going to solve for y. And I'm not going to solve for y. We're going to put y in. And we know this is minus, the y is minus 200. Sorry for that little error, a little messy right there. 
We go ahead and calculate that, and when we do that, we will find that VF is going to equal to plus or minus the square root of would be 25.71 squared. The negatives cancel out, so that'd be plus 2 times 9.8 times 200. We take the plus, we take the square root of that. That's going to give me a final velocity of minus 67. 0.68 meters a second. Okay, that's the final velocity in the y direction only. So that's coming straight down. All right, so now all we got to do is really add the two vectors together, draw a little rough picture. We got a velocity coming down here of 67.68. We have a velocity over here coming at 30.64. And we need to find out what the hypotenuse of that is going to be. All we have to do is fall back to Pythagorean Theorem. We take 67.68 squared plus 30.64 squared. That's going to give me a final velocity at impact. And when I do that, that's going to give me a value of about 78.62 meters a second. So that is your final velocity at impact. And now if we want to find out the angle, Again, very easy. We just go back and we're going to do the inverse tangent is 67.68 divided by 30.64. So we do the t inverse tangent, 67.68 divided by 30.64. That will give us an angle of about 59.42 degrees. All right, so we found a lot of information here. We found out what our final velocity was at impact. We found out what the angle was at impact. We found out what our horizontal displacement was, and we found out what the maximum height of our object was. Again, work through these problems very methodically. Work them separately. Work with the y, com the y direction by itself. Work with the x direction by itself. You're always going to find the time by only looking in the y direction only. Make it just like a free fall problem. It's the same thing as you just threw an object up. If you know what the initial velocity in the, in the y direction, just it's just like you throw an object up and you want to find how long it takes to come back down. All right, best of luck on these type of problems.